Hello everybody and welcome to Books with Ike. My name is Isaac and today I'm going to be doing my uni book haul. And this is not just the books that I got for uni, this is also the books I got while I was at uni, because there are a few of those as well. In fact, the majority of them are leisure books. So, yeah. Without further ado, I'm just going to get on into it. And first I have a couple of non-fiction books. And I'm doing a creative writing course at university, and the first book I've got is First You Write a Sentence by Joe Moran. And this is a writing craft book, obviously. I've read the first chapter of this, and I didn't really like it. It was quite repetitive and stuff. But I don't know, I'll probably read this. It would be good to just read some craft books, I guess. And the other non-fiction book I have is Why I'm No Longer Talking to White People About Race by Rennie Edo Lodge. I'll talk about this in my next wrap-up, but it was incredible and I highly encourage you to pick it up. And yeah, everyone on my course got a copy of this for free and it was great. And then next I have some fiction books that I got for the course. I have three. I should have four, but the first one never arrived and I haven't chased them up on it yet. So that's my fault. But first I've got The Martian Chronicles by Ray Bradbury. And this is about humanity's repeated attempts to colonize Mars and it's a collection of short stories. I've read this and it was okay, but I didn't love it for several reasons. I'll talk about it in my next wrap up. And then there's Their Eyes Were Watching God by Zora Neale Hurston. This is quite difficult to explain the plot of because it's very basic and slice of life. Well, it's not slice of life, it's, it's just following the life of a black woman in... Is it the 1910s or the 1890s? Something like that. I don't know exactly when it's set. It's pre-civil rights era, that's for sure. I want to say 1890s to 1910s, but I could be entirely wrong. I've read it. I didn't really like it. It's just not for me. But it is a, a valuable thing to read, I think. And the last one I haven't read, and that is The Stone Gods by Jeanette Winterson. I've read a couple of chapters of this, and I have absolutely no idea how to describe this. It's it's like, humanity is on this dying planet and they want to move to a new one. On the planet, there's loads of discussions going on about age of consent, because people have the ability to freeze their bodies, so they grow up, but they still look a certain age. And, like, because of, you know, patriarchy and beauty standards, women keep freezing themselves younger and younger. And because of that, men are now going after, you know, children. And so, uh, it's a weird one. It's a, it's a weird one. It's quite interesting, though. So, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, it's, it's kind of uncomfortable to talk about. Oh, and don't think, like, <laughs> the author is endorsing paedophilia, because that's not what it is at all. The main character is definitely very against <laughs> it. Yeah. It's a fucking weird one, though. <laughs> it's, a, it's a fucking weird one. Next, I've got three new releases, and the first of those is Cemetery Boys by Aidan Thomas, and this is probably my most anticipated book of the year, and I bought it as soon as I possibly could. This is a YA own voices Latinx trans urban fantasy, and this is about a boy called Yadriel, who is part of a community of Bruhex who have a very gendered magic system, and so men have the ability to summon ghosts and also release trapped souls to the afterlife, whereas women have the ability to heal. And Yadriel wants to prove himself as a brujo, and by extension as a boy, by performing the magic that only brujos are able to do. But his dad won't let him go through the ceremony to get his powers, so he performs it himself in secret. And so he wants to summon the ghost of his recently killed cousin to find out what happened and release his soul. But instead, he accidentally summons the ghost of a boy from his school and things progress from there. And so I've already read this book and I absolutely loved it. It's definitely going to be one of my favorites of the year and I'll talk more about it in my next wrap up. The next new release I have to talk about is The Friend Scheme by Kale Dietrich. Dietrich? One of those. And this is like a YA contemporary mafia romance, I think? Or gang romance? Yeah, it's about two boys from rival gangs who start to develop a relationship, and I believe the main character is like reluctant to be in a gang and he doesn't really want to be anymore. I say gang, 
They're more like crime families. So yeah, it sounds really good. And I really need to read his previous work as well, The Love Interest, that was about two spies who have to compete to win the affections of this girl, and the one who doesn't win her affections would be killed, but they start to fall for each other instead. I really need to read that. But yeah, I can't wait to read this. It's another one of my most anticipated books of the year. I'm probably not going to get around to it this year, though. And the last new release I have is The Tower of Nero by Rick Riordan, the fifth and final book in the Trials of Apollo series, which is part of the overall Percy Jackson universe, and it follows the god Apollo, who, after the events of the previous Heroes of Olympus series, is stripped of his powers and banished to Earth by Zeus, and has to prove himself worthy of becoming a god again. I have already read this book, and I absolutely loved it. This is the perfect end to The Trials of Apollo, and it is also the perfect end to the Percy Jackson universe. But I don't think it is the end to the Percy Jackson universe. Like, for now it is, but I'm pretty sure there's going to be more, because there's loads that set up in here that just can't be skipped over, in my opinion. Like, a crossover event between all three of his major mythology series is heavily foreshadowed, so I'm pretty sure that has to happen, and if it doesn't I'm gonna feel cheated, and there's some other stuff in here that is also foreshadowed, which I'm gonna feel cheated out of if we don't get it. So I think it's meant to be like a temporary finale, but not like a finale finale. But yeah, it was great, it's definitely gonna be one of my favourite books of the year, and I'll talk about it more in my next wrap-up. And then after that, I got introduced to Book Depository, because I was complaining about how one of the series that I wanted was super expensive, because it was out of print. And then someone was like, hey, you should look at Book Depository. And I was like, I didn't even know they operated in the UK. And they were like, it's UK based. And I was like, oh, I'm an idiot. Um, and so I've got a four books from Book Depository, which were massively expensive on Amazon, but an incredibly reasonable price on Book Depository. And the first thing I got from them was The Tamir Triad by Lynn Flewelling, and that consists of The Bone Doll's Twin, Hidden Warrior, and The Oracle's Queen. And so this is the prequel to the Nightrunner series, which is a really great adventure fantasy series that I really enjoy, and there are some almost trans themes in this one. This is about a princess who, I believe her family is overthrown, and she is hidden by being transformed into the body of a boy. And she was like a baby when this happened, I'm pretty sure, so she's like is raised as a boy, but she is always a girl, and I do believe that's going to be a source of internal conflict within her story, so it's pretty much a trans narrative, maybe? But regardless, I'm sure there will be other queer rep in here as well, if that's not what it's about. But yeah, I'm going to read this entire world in publication order, so I've got one more Nightrunner book to read, and then these ones, so I look forward to it. And then the last book I got from Book Depository and overall is Burn Dive by Karen Lauachi, or Lauache, or Loachi, or Loache, which is the sequel to War Child. And if you've been watching my channel since the beginning, you will know that War Child was one of the books I read right at the start of this year and absolutely loved. It is definitely one of my favourite books of the year. And it has two companion novels, and this one was 45 quid on Amazon, but I managed to get it for 5 quid. So, yeah, I'm gonna look at Book Depository for everything in future. So yeah, these are companion novels, so I don't think it follows the same story as Warcross. Not Warcross, um, Warchild. And so the universe this story is set in is basically there's a never-ending war between humanity and an alien race called the Stritz, and that's basically all I can say. But Warchild was about a boy who is captured by pirates and, like, enslaved. I'm not sure what this will be about, but I do think these last two books are more explicitly queer than Warchild was, so I'm looking forward to that. But I've also heard that they're not as good as Warchild, which I can believe because Warchild was absolutely incredible. But yeah, I can't wait to get round to this. I forgot to mention one of the books I got, 
stops when I first filmed this video. So I'm just going to tack it onto the end here. I got my first ever Yaoi manga, and that was Yellow Volume 1 by Makoto Tateno. And I mean, hopefully this isn't, like, trash, but <laughs> and doesn't fall into these creepy, fetishy tropes that Yaoi has. I'm not holding my breath on that, I'm very sceptical. But the plot sounded interesting, so that's why I added it to my TBR. And then I also got this from Book Depository, and it was super cheap, I think it was like one pound, so I'm not that bothered. And so this is like a, a gangster story about these two mercenary gangsters who like steal drugs from mob bosses and stuff. I think. I don't really know how to describe it, but that, that's basically what they do. And then on one of their missions, one of them gets kidnapped by the villains. And apparently there's like a, a sexual awakening aspect to it, because one of the guys doesn't know that he likes guys. I don't know. It sounds pretty good, and I am cautiously optimistic about it. So yeah, that was every book I got while I was at uni. If you've read any of these books, I'd love to hear what you thought about them, so please leave that in the comments. And also tell me what are some books that you've bought recently. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. You can follow me on Twitter or add me as a friend on Goodreads if you feel like it. Links to both of those in the description. And I will hopefully have another video up soon. But until then, thank you for watching. I have been Isaac and this has been Books with Ike. Goodbye.